hi, welcome to this new video. My name is Sergio and I help companies, students and freelancers to easy and efficiently build visual recognition projects. Uh, last week I came up with an idea of building a game using computer vision. I hired a developer to build this game and then I integrated this with computer vision. So I had pretty much two requirements. One, the game had to be very simple so that anyone can follow and understand the thought process. So this game can be built in just one day because it's very simple. Second, it needs to be integrated with computer vision, with any body movement. And I decided to use the hand because is the easiest to track with the media pipe library offered for free by Google. We're going to see right now step by step how to build this game. And also on the way, I will show you how to download the code and how you can play the game on your computer. So let's start. Let's start first with the draft. So the idea of the game, let's suppose that this is the window that shows where uh, our game is. The idea was having uh, random mosquitoes flying around this uh, screen. So I will put the mosquitoes right here, like this way. So mosquitoes first, then what do we need? We need the hand if we want to kill the mosquitoes. So I take the hand, okay, this is the hand. So the hand will be moving around following my real hand. So the concept is this, that when I move the hand, this, uh, of course, I'm doing it right now on paint, but this is the idea that I wanted to achieve. So the hand, what else do we need for a game? A couple of things. I also added some extra feature, which I also added the bees, so that if you kill the wrong animal, you lose points. So let's put also just sometimes some random bees. Okay, I got one quite, quite big. Let's make this smaller. So among the mosquitoes, we have also some B, which we don't have to kill, otherwise we lose the point. So we can kill only the mosquitoes. Uh, the game is, uh, it's almost everything here. Just one last thing, we need the score. So on the top of the screen, we have the score somewhere here. We have the score and then um, here we have also the time left. Uh, I put one minute, but you can choose. So there are many settings that you, uh, can personalize. So this is the entire concept of, of the game. Nothing really special. That's it. So let's now see on Pygame how this will go step by step. Uh, we start first of all with just a few lines of code to create a window where our game is going to happen. So we import the Pygame library, then we create a screen, we choose the resolution, and here inside the while loop is where the game happens. And we are going to see right now uh, step by step, macro steps, because otherwise it will take lo too long, but we will see what is happening right there. So for now, after these few lines, we have nothing more than a black window where this right here should be our game. And now we move to, you will see. Uh, then we load the background. So you get the background image somewhere from the web. Once you have the image, you need to load the image on the game. So, uh, we load a have background, we import the image library and then image dot load. And here we put the path, the size of the background. So we have the image of the background loaded. What do you need to do after you have the image loaded? You need to display the background on the screen. So we have image dot draw. And then where do we want to draw on the screen? What do we want to draw the background, the position? and the position center. So we put that at the center of the screen. And that's what we get once we uh, load this one. What next? Next, we need to uh, put all the elements uh, for the game. For example, the mosquitoes. Let's do that. For the mosquito and all dynamic objects, the concept changes because with the background is one. So you just load the image and that's pretty much what you have to do. For the mosquito, we load the image. So first of all, we get somewhere the image from the web. Uh, I have this one, mosquito.png, and it needs to be PNG format because it doesn't need to have the background so that it's clean when you overlap this with any other element. Once you have this, you cannot put uh, the mosquito on the screen because there can be so many. So you cannot put one line of codes if you have 100 mosquitoes. Instead, uh, you need to have a class which 
stores all the information of the specific mosquito. So it stores where each single mosquito is, so the position, it stores uh, the size, it stores also the orientation, where the mosquito is going, um, and the speed, if you want to add the speed, and so on. Uh, let me give you an example of how this will uh, work. Right here, we import from mosquito, we import mosquito this way, because mosquito is the Python file, mosquito is the class, so you can you can create a class for whatever you want. So uh, this is something that you have to write. And then here we let's say that we want just three mosquitoes on the game. We load mosquito one, mosquito number one equals mosquito, and let's draw right now this one on the screen. So image dot draw. On the screen, what do we want to draw? We want to draw mosquito number one. Let's take the images and let's now run this one. Here, of course, we can get the uh, the position of each mosquito. I'm not going to get that because uh, they will be hidden at the beginning. So the position is somewhere outside of the screen. So I will just give some random position so that I can show that we can put mosquitoes wherever we want. Let's also generate a second mosquito and let's run this one. Now we have two mosquitoes. We have mosquito one right here, which has a specific size, which was generated randomly. And then we have mosquito two, where also it has a different orientation. So one is going from left to right, the other one from right to left. One is bigger, the other is smaller. So we have a lot of variety. We uh, just a little code because the mosquito class will generate everything randomly. The same is for the bees. So uh, we will do the same for the class bees. So uh, right here we have B1 and then we are going to display that on the screen and uh, let's see our result. So we have mosquito, mosquito and bee. Of course this will all be integrated uh, with the game to be generated randomly and to keep moving on a certain direction. Uh, then it's the time of the hand. Then we have to load a PNG image as we did for the rest so that we have the hand without the background. Now, how do we behave with the hand? Same concept, so let's go on the display. Uh, we're going to import the hand from hand, import hand. Uh, the hand is just one. But uh, the background is stable, the hand moves, so we need an object, so we get the hand equals hand. And let's now display the hand same way we displayed before the rest of the thing. So image draw screen, we want to draw what? The hand, hand.image. Uh, what is the position of the hand? The hand will start from the center point, but I will show you, we can get the the position of the hand by getting hand dot rect. And let me run this one so that I can show you that we have the hand on the screen. This is where the hand position starts with the hand at the center of the screen. Uh, let me show you also the hand file, so hand dot pi, so that you can understand why this is happening. Uh, here we have on the hand, we load the original image hand dot png. We also define the position of the rectangle. So rect, hand dot rect starts from half of the screen. So half of the width. So if width half, half of half of the height, like this. So center point. But we want to follow the hand with the mouse. So what do we do? We have the function follow mouse, which dynamically is going to change the self rect center width pygame.mouse.getPosition. So pygame gives the position of the mouse on the screen and we can update the position. So let me quickly show you how this will work. We have the hand, we generated the hand, we are showing the hand. What do we do? We want to update the position of the hand. We do hand.followMouse and also let's load all the pygame events to get the input from mouse and keyboard. Uh, mm, 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 for event in pygame.event.get uh, if event 
uh, equals pygame dot uh, probably it's quit uh, let me check uh, okay event dot type is pygame dot quit then we want to quit and we have the hand so when I move the mouse the hand is following the mouse now, before concluding, uh, at least this, uh, let me show you how this will work without the hand, real hand, and then we will see the most important part that you are waiting for, integrating this with computer vision. So when a few other things are added, also like the sounds for the hand when you kill the mosquito, this is the game, how it appears. So I'm killing the mosquitoes by clicking the mouse, and you can hear for sure the sound that we get now we are wondering how do we kill the mosquito how do we know that when we are clicking with the mouse we are uh, matching the mosquito with the hand uh, we have a rectangle for each single object so uh, as you could see before we could draw object rectangle so let me just give you an example here for each object whether it's the hand or a mosquito we have the rectangle when these rectangles are matching so we know that the hand is on the same position of the mosquito if the mouse is click we kill the mosquito let me give you a more example uh, another more another example uh, this is what we have behind the scene where the rectangle of the hand matches the rectangle of the mosquito let's see this one it's slowly coming if i click if they are overlapping we kill the mosquito if, if they are really close but not overlapping, nothing happens. So only we keep the rectangle as a reference point for this. Now, hand tracking to add this in real time with the hand. So let's see that, which probably is the thing that you are most interested in. Uh, hand tracking is actually one of the easiest tracking you can do in computer vision for just one reason, because Google created an open source library which does everything just importing one library and a few commands. So uh, after you install the media pipe with the command, let me show you the command, uh, pip install, pip install media pipe, and you press enter. Uh, we have a specific section on the Google website, GitHub of media pipe, where the goal is to track uh, different um, points of the hand. We have up to 20 points, I see here, 20, 21 points of the hand. Here is the list of the points that you can get. If you're interested, I'm going to put all the reference points on my blog, so if you want to get this link. What is the code to track the hand is just this. Right here, I'm going to get this code and I'm going to run this one. Uh, here is the media pipe code running. It's, uh, that's it, copy and paste. The code is already working. I had to do some editing, of course, because uh, this is not enough. We have the landmarks of the hand. Uh, so we, first of all, I decided to take one point of the hand, uh, probably, uh, I guess this point, and put that instead of mouse following. So what did I change? On the hand file, you see we have follow mouse, this code right here, and then I added a simple function, follow media pipe hand, which changed the center rect with the media pipe library that I integrated somewhere else. So the media pipe gives the coordinate, and that's how we get that. Also, you might be wondering, okay, we can track the hand, but how can we detect the click? So how can we detect if the hand is closed or if it's open? I'm also going to show you that. The concept is that we are tracking not just the hand, but we're tracking uh, different landmarks. Well, uh, let's focus just on a few of them. Let's focus on the number zero, number nine, and number 12. 12 is on top, like this. If I close the hand, so is the idea, if I close the hand, number 12 goes below number 9. We have 12 is on top, 9 at the center, and then we have 0. 
if we have 12 below number nine, that everything gets easy. We can just say if the y position of the 12th point is below the ninth, then is the, the hand is closed, otherwise it's open. Let me show you an example. Uh, on the media pipe code where we get the landmarks, I added uh, a couple of lines to get landmark position X and Y of the point number nine, position of number 12, so that we have number nine and number 12. Then what else? I put a circle on them so that we can see, I can display and show you on the screen. Actually, let me show them so that we have everything in real time of what I'm talking about. So we have a circle right here. 12 is the red point and number nine is the green point. Now, we check the position. We have Y is index nine, Y1 is index 12. If Y1, so index 12, is greater than Y, it means that on the image, if if this is greater, it means say if the red point is below the green point, so if Y1 is greater than Y, we have hand status closed, otherwise hand status open, and I'm, I'm showing the text on the screen. So on the top of the screen, you see right here we have open. If I close the hand, so when the red circle goes below the green circle, you see it gets closed. It's just, uh, there is uh, nothing really extraordinary in this, just a position of the points. Uh, it works. So it's a simple solution, but it works. So that's why I chose this one really fast. Open, close, open, close. So you move around and you close the hand. And now let me show you the final version of the game. Uh, now, if you want to play this game, uh, there is a download link uh, on the description below. So there is a blog post, there is somewhere written then download source code, you click there. It comes a folder with a few files. Let me open and quickly show you what you're going to get because there are a few files. Mm, so if there is interest for this game, I will write also maybe more detailed description and instructions on how to run it. but. Uh, pretty much you need to run the file main.py with the Python that you have. Once you download this, you run main.py. So I have here main.py. You click run. It will take a few seconds to uh, load the camera. You will see the menu of, the, of this. When you press start, also the camera will be loaded. You, you will see a second frame of the game. So if you have a hard time running this, uh, please let me know in the comments and I will, I will make sure that the installation will be easier. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this game and that uh, I try to explain as simple as possible that you could follow uh, the thought process and the steps that were necessary to build this game. Uh, I'm going to release a lot of new interesting content, whether for entertainment, also more important things uh, for companies and computer vision uh, to, use, to use it on a professional level. So if you want to keep following this stuff, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and let me know on the comments if you like this game and what else would you like to see right here. So this is all for this video. See you on the next one.